Guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna use an ideal 48 inch tiller. You can see right here in a previous video, we use an all purpose plow, three passes down and back. This is the finished results. We're gonna compare those results versus the results of a tiller. This is the same day, all right? So we went and hooked this up right afterwards. We're gonna go down and back, see the results with one pass compared to three passes. If needed, we'll go down and back again. And I think I'm gonna run this tiller over top of what I plowed already. That's just not a good enough result for me there to want to plant in. So I'm going to finish that out, smooth it out for a good seed bed before we seed later this spring. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of Dirt Dog equipment, but Dirt Dog does not offer a four foot tiller. So something for your subcompact tractors, the 1025R, Kubota BX, anything in that smallest footprint of modern day tractors. So the 48 inch that we offered this year is by Ideal Farm Equipment. So this is going to be similar to the Dirt Dog that it is a made in the USA with some four foreign or imported components like the gearbox for example so we're trying to get away from the made in china stuff whenever possible last year you saw us running tar river uh, tillers and land planes and it was kind of our last season with them for a number of reasons but so we're switching over to more north american made companies is is the the gist of it so this ideal tiller is going to be four foot wide it's going to have a slip clutch on it something that i actually notice i don't see very often is um just basically slip clutch maintenance or almost like a checklist over here on the sticker so that's kind of nice to see too so we'll have similar features what you expect what you want to see on a tiller so um, got the gearbox up here this is gear driven on the side it's not going to be chain driven i like that a little bit more robust i believe uh, swing gate on the back with this chain so you can adjust that swing your gate open if you want to or not you're going to have a parking stand over on this far side now this has four blades per flange and the thought process I think with Ideal is that you're gonna put less strain on a subcompact tractor versus a six blades per flange. So we'll be able to see if there's a difference in performance as we're chilling today. But something interesting is that on the, the flanges themselves that the blades bolt onto, there's extra holes on there. There's four extra holes. You have two bolts per flange. So potentially you could stagger in a different way, add another flange or two more. Oh. Wow, look at them geese. That's a flock. So what I was saying was that on the flanges underneath here, right now you have four blades per flange, but there's extra holes in those flanges. So there's four extra holes total, which would equate to a total of two extra blades. So I almost feel like you could potentially add more blades onto each flange if you wanted to, but we'll check out the performance with four blades, see how it does, and we can make a determination from there. A couple more features you might be interested in. This whole plate that you see down here kind of underneath the housing is adjustable up and down. So you have multiple bolt holes, so you can adjust this kind of skid runner to help out with your depth. And speaking of max depth, it is up to a seven inch tilling depth, which is typically unheard of on a four foot tiller. I don't really see the need to go seven inches down, but it's nice to know you can. And of course, if you didn't notice, this is quick hitch compatible. We're using the Spico Cat 1 quick hitch. This one does not use any bushings, all right? So we sell an absolute boatload of these things for that very reason, but you don't have to use a quick hitch. If you want to just hook it right up to your category one three point hitch, you can do that as well. It's standard 540 RPM rear PTO. Just got the PTO shaft, hook it up right to the back of your tractor have the safety chains, the shaft cover, all that good stuff too. Now something that's mentioned on this sticker on this side and maybe somewhere else as well, and just for your general information, most gearboxes these days are coming empty without any oil in there. Maybe there's just a trace film just to kind of coat the inside of the gearbox, but that's due to different shipping regulations, federal regulations that uh, limit or or don't allow at all any fluids to be shipped. And so that's the reason behind that. So it's always a good idea to check your gearboxes before you get to work. And speaking of work, we're gonna get to it right now. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below.
All right, so we just did one pass down and one pass back. So that's single coverage right there. And it is slower than using the plow, there's no doubt. But when you have to go multiple passes to get these results versus one pass to get those results, I'll leave that up to you. Now, you're going probably twice as deep with the, uh, the all-purpose plow compared to the tiller. That's about four inches deep or so, maybe four and a half, somewhere right in there. I would guess this is around eight, maybe nine in certain places, but it's inconsistent, right? There's a lot of areas that didn't get plowed up. So you have those deeper furrows that did get plowed up and then chunks of sod that are still in place. And, and that's after three passes back and forth. And it was a very jarring ride doing that. This was a very smooth ride, very easy to do. A consistent seabed all the way across there. And you can still see some grass and other debris and, and matter that's on top here, but same thing in the all-purpose plow area as well. So what I think is that you're getting better results, in my opinion, with the tiller, a more consistent seed bed so that when you go to seed, you're gonna have an easier chance or more uh, higher likelihood, I guess, of having consistent seed depth. So if your clover seed needs to be a half inch down or brassicas need to be an inch or inch and a half or two inches, whatever it is, whatever you're planting, you're gonna have a more consistent chance to do so versus having chunks of sod that are way up high and, and very solid, other areas that haven't been tilled and turned at all, and then deeper furrows that are just gonna be tough to work with. And you really wouldn't wanna plant in this. You'd wanna come back through with something else, a disc maybe and break up those clods, uh, a cultipacker to smooth it out as well. But again, it's a lot more work, a lot more passes to get the same result as what a tiller can do in just one or two passes. So at this point, I'm gonna leave what I just tilled all alone. I'm gonna come through what I plowed with the all-purpose plow and try to get that resembling somewhat uh, what the tiller did over here. And then, well, let's see, we're in April, probably about a month and a half still. Technically, I'm probably a little early on my tilling. Um, we're gonna come back through and plant our screening cover that we have. So it's a, it's a, it's a giant screen, it'll grow up to, it's over 12 foot tall in one season. So you can plant it even in, in June and still get, I think it's over 10 foot in height. It's a crazy cool uh, type of plant that you can get. And so we're actually a new dealer with Northwoods Whitetails who sells this product along with all sorts of food plot seeds too. So we're gonna plant plots all over this place uh, this year, get the screening cover here, closer to the road, a lot of different areas. So access to stands, that kind of thing too. Gonna have a lot of fun. So if you wanna see what's going on out here at the property, see more tractor videos in general, we'd love to have you tag along, hit that subscribe button. And so let's get this section tilled up here and see if we can get ready to seed. finish up in just a minute but these next two rows here were done over the plowing that we'd already done with the all-purpose plow so I mean these results are just so much better I don't I don't really see the need the requirement to plow before you till I mean what we did over here just tilling plowing and then tilling and then just plowing you can see the results I think speak for themselves okay we're just wrapping up just thought of it but 
this is the performance with four blades per flange on the tiller all right so i've always used six blades per flange there's no way you could tell the difference between four and six blade this did just as good as any six blade tiller that i've used so i think you might be able to add more blades onto this one if you needed to i don't know for sure i'll have to verify that but the way it's set up stock with four blades on each flange works pretty darn good so I'm gonna get that knocked out, but if you guys are in the market for something for your tractor, whether it's for the three-point hitch or the front end loader, it could be pallet forks, could be a snow pusher, could be a tiller, could be a snow blower, could be a brush hog, you name it, we can help. Check out goodworkstractors.com. We do sell and ship all over the country. If you enjoy watching tractor videos, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. <music>